College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Joe Tessator, Matt Millen, Shelly Smith with you at Autzen Stadium. The first of four straight home games to open the year for Oregon. Gus Malzahn, Arkansas State's new head coach. His name was attached to other jobs, but he went back to his home state. He said he wants to make this school the Boise State of the South. There's a guy getting a lot of preseason Heisman hype. DeAnthony Thomas, so dangerous. A sophomore, one of the most dynamic players in all of college football. Oregon won the toss and will receive. Josh Huff also back as Luke Ferguson will be kicking from the 35-yard line. New rule in college football. And they're going to play some keep away from the dangerous DeAnthony Thomas as the fair catch was hauled in at the 27 by Dion Jordan, an All-America candidate at defensive end. So Marcus Mario Tom, and that is how you pronounce the name because mom called from Hawaii, Matt, and said, listen up, folks. It's Mario Tom. Put a hyphen between that Mario and Tom. Only 18 years old, 6'4", 211. Chip Kelly said, seemingly unflappable. And Kenyon Barner almost breaks that one. And in typical Kenyon Barner fashion, a good spurt through the defensive line and a gain of 18 yards, a tackle by Toshan Holmes. You know, there's one thing about talking about playing against this pace, and then there's another one realizing just how fast it is. Mario Toth, quick strike to the near side, and he's able to get it complete to Daryl Hawkins. So defensively, you have to get your calls in right away. They're at the line of scrimmage ready to go. These offensive linemen, they run to the ball. They're ready to go when the umpire puts the ball down. Look at that. They're following him. Pressure comes, and he goes down. That was Shervarius Jackson. A lot of experience, a JUCO transfer, senior, off the edge. They just do a nice stunt, and he comes back to the inside. They slid his way, and he got past the uh, got past the center who slid to him. Nick Nelms also getting involved there. So it makes for a second and 18, backed up just beyond midfield. Line to make is inside the 32. And the inside keep with Kenyon Barner. Spent three years backing up LaMichael James, James Oregon's all-time leading rusher. Second round draft pick of the 49ers. One of the things that you do, uh, you know, you're talking about playing about Barner and Mario Todd and DeAnthony Thomas, and you also are playing against this pace. The best way to take the pace out is get a negative play, which they did. Mario Todd over the middle, and he has it complete to Keenan Lowe. Lowe had himself a great fall camp. And it is a first down for the Ducks as they speed up to the line again. What you can't teach is poise, and that's what he has in the pocket. You mentioned Chip Kelly said he's unflappable. That's an awesome quality for a quarterback. Mario Tom with time, and that is complete inside the 10 to DeAnthony Thomas. First and goal, Oregon, just like that. Anthony Thomas can beat you from so many different spots on the field. Barner driving ahead and in. Well, 2012 looks much the same like last season ended up for the Ducks. Plenty of offense. And wasting no time. That negative play, they brushed off like it never happened. Kenyon Barner is a guy that everybody kind of overlooks because of Anthony Thomas. Unbalanced formation, and they snap it. And they score the two-point conversion. And that was Deion Jordan, the star defensive player, on the pass from Jackson Rice. Punter to defensive end for a two-point conversion. Free for 30 days. 
the 18 year old from Honolulu Marcus Mariota bringing the Ducks right down the field against Arkansas State eight nothing Oregon has the most touchdown drives of two minutes or fewer since the start of the 2010 season minute 38 seven plays and Barner caps it with a four yard touchdown run and then they throw off the unbalanced formation for the two point Alejandro Maldonado kicking off as he will do so many times this year David Oku former SEC top recruit back deep on the return from the two here's Oku and he is wrapped up at the 21 yard line now Matt Arkansas State does have themselves a quarterback Ryan Applin is a senior had 4,176 yards of total offense last season. Smart kid. He's got great feet. He can get in and out of the pocket. He moves around well. He's good in an improv. To the next level, he could be, he'd be good for the West Coast kind of system, a guy who can improvise. Oku in the backfield with Applin. He barely gets back to the line of scrimmage as Kiko Alonso was there to find him. Defensive MVP of the Rose Bowl. Another fast pace. They go with a little bit of a sugar huddle here, trying to slow things down a little bit. Remember, Gus Malzahn was the offensive coordinator for Auburn in that championship game. Doesn't quite have the same personnel here. Sprints to the near side. Flag is down. And so there's motion up front. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 60, offense. Five yard penalty, three feet second down. Steven Honga, 315 pound left guard. Wes Malzahn, left Auburn. Talk of getting jobs elsewhere. He feels very confident coming back to his home state. Where he was a high school coaching legend. Second and 15 now. Quickly throw it out to Josh Jarbeau, who makes the first man miss and just gets a yard past the original line of scrimmage before he was tackled by Alonzo. There's so much talk about Gus Malzahn and the offense coming back, but you have to keep in mind you can you can call the greatest game in the world if you don't have the horses to run it it's going to be tough and I think Mike Leach found that out the other night no doubt about that Leach's offense held without a touchdown in his debut with Washington State third and 14 Applin tries to set up the screen David Oku picks up a block and drives his leg he's going to be just short of the line to make by a yard it was Michael Clay and Brian Jackson with the tackle Fourth down. And Malzahn is keeping his offense out there for a moment before sending out the special teams. Well, the hesitation is because he knows if this offense is what it looks like it is and it's consistent, get the ball in this guy's hands right here. D'Anthony Thomas, that's a big play waiting to happen. Black Mamba, one of the most dangerous players in all of college football. Nelly Sullivan. To punt. Thomas. And he scoots ahead to the 32. Mario Ta and the Ducks offense back out there. Okay, fine. Brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Those are tonight's uniforms. Never been put together this combination before. Freshly revealed with the lightning yellow and apple green. Of course, in recent years, they've become the fashion statement of college football. We like to term it the O Collection. Matt, as we take a look at the recent uniform combinations for the Ducks. Remember the Rose Bowl, the chrome helmets. Of course, it got everybody's attention in the national championship game a couple years ago with what looked like a uh, highlighter exploded on their shoes and socks. 
And tonight, no different as they're going with the helmets of lightning yellow and the jerseys of apple green. Claiming the shoes as a chrome green combination. Mario Ta swings it out of the backfield to Kenyon Barner. And Barner is out to the 41-yard line. Kenyon Barner's yeah, he's that guy that everybody kind of forgets, and he is a talented, talented player. Got excellent size, good speed, catches the ball well. He blocks and protects inside. He'll do well at the next level. Second and two now. Thomas was the man in motion. That is incomplete at the 45-yard line as Mario Tal was trying to connect with Daryl Hawkins. Holmes had the coverage. Hawkins had a chance at that ball. The one thing you notice about Mario Tal right away is pretty darn accurate. That ball every time has been where it's supposed to be. The pitch to Thomas. And watch out for the speed here. DeAnthony Thomas, a flag is down as he makes his way across the goal line. But we will check the flag. Did I mention to you that he's pretty fast? Unbelievable. <laughs> As Chip Kelly told us, I've never seen anybody like him. This one looks like it's going to come back, but it was all set up by Mario Ota. Ten-yard penalty. Third down. And you got Daryl Hawkins, the receiver who was trying to seal that edge. Let's look at the athleticism of DeAnthony. This is just pure speed. And he just hits another gear. Nice run skill through there at the end. But Mariota, right in the beginning, he held it to right to the end and then flipped it out. It was great timing by the quarterback. He gets a 59-yard touchdown run. First down after the penalty enforcement. So they mark the penalty and it still gives them the first down. So it is first down and 10 at the 47-yard line. Barner in the backfield with Mariota. This is Addison. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Flag. All right, go. Alabama still firmly in control against Michigan, but Denard Robinson trying to make some noise. 34-7 late. Defensive back falls down, and Devin Gardner hauls in the touchdown pass. 34-14 in the fourth quarter. It's on ABC. Personal foul on the defense. Number Thanks, Reese. 15-yard penalty. First down. 15-yard penalty. Goes against Andrew Tryon, the cornerback for Arkansas State, as if the Oregon offense needs any help. As Malzahn told us the other day, he said this is going to be a huge challenge to try to keep up with this pace. Mario Ta out of the gun here on first down. And he gets it to his tight end, Colt Lyurwa. And Lyra, a big athlete at 6'5", 246. Returned to the team just a couple of weeks ago, was dealing with personal issues. Coaches knew that he planned to return, so he's playing a bit of catch-up at the end of fall camp and into this first game. He's a good-looking rascal. They like him a lot. Yeah, he catches the ball well. He can block inside. He's got some size to him. And they take advantage of every physical attribute you have up here. I'm so impressed with what Chip Kelly does here. Garner looking for a hole. Offensive line driving a bit with him, still pushing the pile forward. Depend on the mark. Flag comes in in the defensive backfield as it looked like a couple of players were getting chippy there. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, when you take a look at Oregon, you have to choose them. You got Barner, Thomas, Jordan, Boyette. They all can play. They all play with speed. And they're all very, very smart, high football IQs. Deion Jordan already has a score tonight, the defensive the end. Personal foul, defense, number eight. Finley's half the distance to the goal, first down. Now, Arkansas State defense, if they're starting to lose their composure this early and getting frustrated, it's going to be a very long evening. Well, the composure is what you really see out of that young quarterback. Boy, I could not be more impressed. Now, it's just two series. But Mariota shows that ability to be unflappable in the face of all situations that we've seen so far that's presented to him. I really liked him on in the option game. Nice patience. That stuff's hard to do, and he does it well. Well, lines up in the backfield. Mariota to the goal line, and that is hauled 
in for a touchdown, DeAnthony Thomas. Every which way he does it. What's the signal yet, though? 12 yard touchdown reception for Thomas. And did you see how accurate that ball was between two defenders? Tess, that was right where it had to be. A year ago, he averaged a touchdown every 6.3 touches from scrimmage. Here they go. Let's see if they go with a two pointer again. Last time, they passed off of that formation. This time, Rob Beard's going to set up for an extra point. He's just looking at numbers, and if he has a number advantage, he takes advantage of it. Fifteen nothing. Marcus Mariota, sixty-seven yard drive, twelve yard touchdown pass to Dat the Anthony Thomas. You have more points than you have plays. That's typically a good thing. It depends on your perspective, <laughs> Tess, you know, but if you're on the other side of that, oh, that's no. not a good thing. See, Puddle's already being passed around like a beach ball here in the crowd at Watson as Maldonado to kick off again. David Oku back deep for the return. Remember, he was a big recruit for Lane Kiffin when he was at Tennessee. There's David Oku. And he can't even find his way to the 20-yard line. Let's check in with Reese again. All right, Joe Tess, Oklahoma, late night start against UTEP. Tressway punting it away, or maybe not. Richard Spencer blocked it for the Miners. Nathan Jeffrey scored, and look at this. UTEP on top of Oklahoma. Okay, it's really, really early. That's 7 now. <laughs> that wasn't the easiest fall camp for the Sooners. Reese had the two issues on the offensive line. Minus a center and a guard. Of course, trying to replace Ryan Boyles. Got the transfer from Penn State in there. And the snap was a little off to Applin, and he can't find anywhere to go at all. Right now, the lights look really bright for this Arkansas State team. Well, Seiko Lacumbo, it's been a touchdown machine, came up with a sack there. Has four career touchdowns. And add a sack to his career numbers there on Ryan Applin. Backs him up to a second and 15. Frankie Jackson comes into the game at running back. Applin finds Jackson. Jackson looking for a block. And ball came out at the end there. And it's still loose on the ground. And the Ducks recover it. You see Michael Clay coming up with the ball. He had two fumble recoveries a year ago and gets the first of this season. Well, remember I mentioned the lights were too bright for this team. And that's just a nice play right there. The corner just gets a nice hit right on the football. That's Dustin Haynes. Oh, no, Alomo. Alomo, sorry. That play Olomo forcing the fumble there and Clay after it was rolling around, finally falls on it. So the Ducks this time will start at the 22. Farner to the outside. Can he get the edge? Forced out and run down at about the 16-yard line by Chris Humes. You know, Tess, lost in all of this fast pace and speed and stuff, is there some great fundamental football going on down there? How so? Where offensive do you, see line, oh, you see it in the offensive line. Their assignment right. They do a nice job of blocking on the edge. They do a great job with his receivers getting into defenders down the field. Mario Ta to the tight end. Lyurla makes the first man miss. And look at him stay his ground. It'll be first and goal as he pushes the pile just inside the five. He was taking Don Jones, the strong side backer, for a ride. Heck, he looked like a beast on that one. And Mariota can't say enough about him. Great job of feel and sense, got rid of the ball quick. Mariota now sprinting to the near side, to the end zone, back of the end zone, 
touchdown, Josh Huff. Going to his left, so versatile. Sees the whole field, great patience and poise. It's easy to see in three series, Joe. It's easy to see why Chip Kelly said, this is our guy. Remember, Darren Thomas left the program early. Brian Bennett, many thought it would be his. He looked good a year ago filling in. And there is Bennett, who handled the news of being number two, Chip says, the way he would want any of his players to. He's got that competitive spirit, wants to be the man. But Marcus Mariota is showing why Kelly made the decision. And Beard makes it 22 to nothing. One offensive genius versus the other. Chip's got the edge in talent. A very entertaining college football Saturday. Marcus Mariota finding Josh Huff moments ago, Matt. Now, if you're sitting at home, you're sitting, uh, you look, it's Arkansas State. It's clearly not as talented as a team. But that's not what's so impressive about the kid. What's so impressive about the kid is the things that he's doing. And this is still under pressure. This is hard to do to run to your left. He locates the receivers fast. He keeps his poise, and he's accurate. Those things are impressive. Oku from the three, David Oku. And he makes his way to the 23-yard line. Marcus Mariota, first college game. An impressive early from Hawaii. Thus the pronunciation, by the way. It's been said, Mariota, Mariata. Mom called the athletic department about a week ago. She said, do me this favor. It's Mario and then Ta. Put it all together, Marcus Mariota. And there's his dad, Toa, who made the trip here to Oregon to see his son make his college debut. He's got a lot to like early. It's a nice smile he has on his face, and he deserves it. Applin now out of the gun. And David Oku, and he is taken down at about the 27-yard line as Avery Patterson came up from that safety spot. Of course, one of the reasons many like Oregon this year to make a run of the national title is because of the defense and all the talent Gus Malzahn said it's a better defense than the one we faced in the BCS title game. And McKissick, J.D. McKissick, the first down for Arkansas State. College football weekend continues right into Monday night. College football primetime presented by Russell Athletic, Georgia Tech against number 16, Virginia Tech, Monday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. First down for the Red Wolves as they go with the screen here to Josh Jarboe. Remember Josh Jarboe, flag is down. He was a big recruit out of high school, went to Oklahoma, got himself into trouble there, was dismissed from the team, went to Troy in the Sun Belt, sat out a year, played there, then was dismissed from Troy as well, went Juco, came to Arkansas State and really straightened himself out at 730 yards a year ago. Number 67, 15-yard penalty. First down. And he's going to push him back. Big Aaron Williams. Left tackle. Negating that effort by Jarbo. Sporting the matching dreads to the crimson colors of Arkansas State. Still first down, but backed up with the line to make being the 46. Try to swing it out of the backfield this time. As McKissick rolls his way just past the 30-yard line, and Terrence Mitchell, who had a really good Rose Bowl, comes up with the tackle. You know, talking to Nick Aliota, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, he said, listen, the last time we played, played they ran a ton of screens. He said, the one thing we're going to do is we are going to take care of the screen game. Of course, right now, Gus Malzahn is calling a lot of screens. Second and 15. And a flag comes down as there was some motion. 
Henry playing on the field. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, 85, five yard penalty, second down. Penalty pitch the ball down to the 26, second down penalty. Second and 20 now. Macklin checking over with Malzahn. Signal in. Audible's at the line. Oku in the backfield with him. And that was through the hands of Anthony Kinsey, the Juco transfer tight end. It was interesting talking to Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator for Oregon. He loves working for Chip Kelly, but his defense getting a lot of accolades in the preseason, people hyping him up. He said, I want to see the results. I know we have good, fast talent, but I want to see the results. Tonight he gets the first reveal of that. Well, he's got some horses up there. And that Jordan, number 96 on the, on the defensive end, that kid, he's a player. He can really go. Absolute pass rushing freak is number 96. 6'7, 243, built for speed off the edge. Applin, gonna tuck it and run it, and only able to get out to the 32. Needed to get to the 36. As Locumbo made the tackle on Applin. Oseko Locumbo. The clock was stopped. Number 74, helmet came off. On the offense, he must remain out for one play. That won't play a factor. That's Zach McKnight, the right tackle. It's a point of emphasis that you've probably seen if you've watched college football since the kickoff on Thursday. The new helmet roll with an emphasis on player safety and really emphasis on helmets fitting properly because they've been coming off in recent years so much. Whatever happened to those days where you had to pull those ear holes oh, apart, Matt? And they're gone. Get that thing over a big skull. And a little stay away from DeAnthony Thomas. As Marcus Mariota has had himself a night and is ready for more. The freshman quarterback, Matt. And it's easy to see why Chip Kelly said that this is the guy. He said it was a hunch, a thing of the gut. But what he saw was what his eyes were showing him. He has great poise, can't teach it. He's accurate, hard to teach. He has command of the offense. That is just a confident kid who just stepped in here and took this thing over, and it is running seamlessly. 9 of 10 for over 100 yards already. And Barner unable to spin free, just a gain of two that time, tackled by Nathan Harold, who's been a very consistent player, all-conference pick for Arkansas State. As you watch Mario Ta, and you'll see Barner, and you'll see DeAnthony Thomas. Now what this team also does is it rolls in their offensive line. And now this is the second offensive line that's in. They keep them fresh, and they keep the pedal to the metal. Mario Ta tucks it now, and he dives ahead. Ball came loose at the end there, and they're saying he was down. And he's got that good first step. Beat out Brian Bennett for the starting job. There is Bennett. Who's a good player, just oh. a sophomore. Could still play a role anywhere on this team. They said could be on special teams, maybe a little wide receiver or running back. He came down early. He was running routes. <laughs> he's just, he's a good athlete. 8.7 yards per carry. He's number one on the team a year ago. Third and one. And a strong defensive effort that time by Quashon Lee. Young man who they feel has a lot of potential. And he came in and filled that hole well, finding Kenyon Barner. Got a nice block out of the left tackle, but Lee comes downhill really well, and nobody blocks him. Oregon here on a fourth and one. And Mario Ta easily picks up the first down as the Ducks will be in business 
at the 30-yard line. Andrew Tryon, the cornerback, had to come over and make the tackle after the 17-yard run. The test, what that is, that's all on Mario Top. And he's reading the backer. And you see 54 when he jumped in? That's his key. As soon as he jumped down, he's off to the races. Everyone else is accounted for. You don't account for one person. That gives you the advantage offensively. Mario Ta sets up the screen this time. Low and Keenan Low able to get it to the 23-yard line before being chopped down by Lee. You know, one of the players who's playing left tackle in there right now is Hall of Fame Howie Long's son, Kyle Long. What a good-looking rascal he is. 6'7", 3'11", is number 74. And once again, they go with the screen to low. A little middle screen. But Kyle Long, number 75. What an interesting story on Kyle Long. Howie Long's son was a baseball player at Florida State. A pitcher. 6'7", 290 pounds on the mound. How would you like that? No, thank you. Gave up <laughs> baseball and uh, came to take part in the family business. Put on those pads. Third and two. Once again, Lowe getting plenty of work here. Keenan Lowe muscles ahead for another first down. This is, this, these are both offensive lines are more physical than they've been in the past. And what they have become is they've become more lean and physical. Kenyon Barner with blockers in front. Kenyon Barner. Hello, end zone. It's a good block by Josh Huff and Braylon Anderson. 17-yard touchdown run. Just taking advantage of those fundamentals we spoke about, Tess. Just they do a great job of assignment football. Everybody gets on who they have to get on. And then these runners are just exceptional. Sunbelt Conference champs from a year ago are just being mauled and left behind. It's a clinic. Flag comes down before the snap there. Offside by contact number 93 on the defense. Finley is half the distance to the goal. Oregon declines the penalty. Now Rob Beard will line up for the extra point. When you're the Ducks kicker, it's pretty much all you do all day long is line up for extra points. And Beard is now 70 for 70 on PATs in his career. Barner with ease. 29 nothing. Glad you're with us here to wrap up what's been a very interesting day of college football. You got that score right. 227 left in the first. And it is 29 to nothing, number five, Oregon, who many feel perhaps this is the year with the offense they have. You know all the weaponry, but the talent on defense is superb now. The recruiting in recent years has put a group together with extreme talent, especially the speed off the edge. The question mark was the guy you just saw on the phone, a first-year starting quarterback. No question tonight against Arkansas State for Marcus Mariota. David Oku, once again, back to return the Maldonado kick. Oku from the one. And good special teams pursuit by the Ducks taken down at the 17. Just two races left until the chase Sunday on ESPN. It's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, and coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern. Well, Arkansas State probably feels like they're chasing all night. Well, they need to get something going. You know, they have not been able to push anything down the field. They've been they've been living off the screens to the outside, the bubble screens. No, nothing that they've been able to generate on the ground. It's been a tough night for them. Uh, 
Arkansas State with just 45 total yards. The play clock is not operating. It will be kept on the field by the back judge. Does it really matter when you have a Chip Kelly offense? <laughs> Ryan Applin, just to give some perspective on how accomplished the quarterback number 16 is for Arkansas State, he holds the school record for passing yards in a game, ranked first all-time in school history and completions. This is just a different level. Josh Jarbeau. Let's check in with Shelly Smith. You know, Gus Malzahn's biggest job is going to be keeping his team from hanging their heads and becoming deflated down 29 to nothing in the first quarter. But right now, everyone is up off the bench. There is great communication. There is great enthusiasm. Nobody here is hanging their heads. Um, it's still, you know, a long way to go. That's what he's going to have to do. Shelly told us the other day, we may be playing the best team in America. He said, looking at them on film, Knowing who they have coming back. Timeout. Arkansas State. And Gus Malzahn's going to talk things over. This will be a 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout. First year at Arkansas State, replaced Hugh Freeze, who left for Ole Miss. And he has those roots right there in his home state of Arkansas. High school football, he was a legend, won three state titles. University of Arkansas was offensive coordinator there, also played there as a walk-on receiver. And of course, now the head coach at Arkansas State. And he really believes that he can connect with the high school coaches around the state, Matt. In fact, he had what he calls the A-State ambush. They hit every school in the state. Wants to give everybody ownership of this program. Our Edward Jones FaceTime profile. And as you see, the resume on Gus Malzahn. A big accomplishment came at Auburn with Cam Newton in that offense, leading them to a national title. As they go with the quick screen to David Oku, and Oku tries to get to that edge, and he is finally pursued and run down at the 25. Gus Malzahn, who of course won the Broyles Award as the top assistant in college football. He knows what his team is, he knows that he's on the front end of it. He knew this was a tough challenge coming into it. He also thought that this was the best Oregon team that he'd seen. Yeah, and, and he, he said, listen, this is not how I want to start my campaign. This is not how I want to try to develop my team. This is one of those checks the athletic department games here. They'd be better suited with a different kind of opponent, but it is what it is. Applin now, as a flag is down, as he is able to dive out to the 26-yard line, he was pursued by Michael Clay. The speed for Oregon is also on the defensive side, and it resides in their secondary as well as, as as well as in their backers. And these defensive ends can run, but they're they're keeping the top of the coverage on the whole time. They're keeping everything in front of them. See Alonzo, Mooley, two of the talented players on that Ducks defense. Michael Clay, 46 inside. That's a underappreciated guy, Clay. Holding on the defense, number 20, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's John Boyette. We talk about a tough guy. John Boyette's a safety for Oregon. He is every bit of football player. And he is a tapeaholic. Yep. And he's a guy who you can't keep. Oh, he's, a, he's a football gym rat. He will be a coach one day. Had 17 tackles in the Rose Bowl. Literally left his body on the field in the Rose Bowl. I don't know if he was exhausted or knocked out. There's been conflicting reports. But he was laying there while everybody was celebrating on that last play. Sir Gregory Thornton, as Arkansas State is able to surge ahead to the 41-yard line. Basically what they're doing right now is they're getting two receivers and two defenders, and they're just working the short passing game, having one receiver block his defender, and then allowing that other receiver trying to beat the lone defender. It's a game of space. First down here, just past midfield, Josh Jarboe with the completion. Jarboe's got some game. He's got a little bit of swag out there. Remember, he was at Oklahoma, started his career there. Applin does a nice job of getting rid of the ball quickly, and then it's just, like I mentioned, it's a game of space, one-on-one. -on -one. Who's going to win? And right now, Oregon's been doing a good job of tackling out in space. Arkansas State trying to find a bit of rhythm. 
First down, crossing midfield. Once again, they find some space with Jarbo. And the talented senior is able to get it to the 39-yard line. Boyette with the tackle, forcing him out. Gus Malzahn says he's going to be patient. That's all he's showing here. Not trying to take a shot down the field. Just taking exactly what Oregon's giving him with the short stuff underneath. And Mark gives them a first down there on that. Applin now goes to the other side this time and wrapped up right away is Taylor Stockerman. That was Ifo Ekpre Olamu. Olamu is a nice tackle. I mean, the one thing that you've seen with these defenders, as soon as the ball's caught, there's somebody on them right away. They pursue. And that is the end of the first quarter. Absolutely dominated by the fifth ranked team in the country. 29 to nothing. Marcus Mariota with a sensational debut for the Ducks. Beautiful night at Autzen Stadium here at Oregon. 29 to nothing. Number five has revved that engine. Hurricane and tropical storm Isaac has affected many people, states, and teams. And the Red Cross is in action in the Gulf region and beyond providing shelter. We want to remind you that you can learn how to help for this disaster. And for others, you can visit redcross.org. Of course, they're always collecting money ahead of disasters. Money goes to both current and future situations. That was Jarbo, and it's a, another first down for Arkansas State. Acklin's had a good-looking drive here, the quarterback. And as Arkansas State tries to get on the board early here in the second quarter. Oku patiently waiting and getting to the 21 yard line tackled by Taylor Hart. Just to sum things up, Applin's had some recent success on this drive, but Marcus Mariota, the redshirt freshman quarterback, has been sensational for Oregon as they've had it every which way against that Arkansas State defense. Applin to the end zone overthrows the intended target, Jarbo. And that was the first real bad decision that Applin's made. <clears throat> He's been getting to the line of scrimmage, seeing what they do, and if you're if you're giving them um, two deep and five under, he's been throwing back outside or running at it. And then if he's dropping down like now, he's got one high, and then he's been trying to hit the seams or the or the outside stuff. Third and four. Flag. Flag comes in. False start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty. Third down. The center. That's hard to do. Eric Allen. You get Eric Allen. You're, the, you're the guy with the ball. You got the ball. You know the count. Best drive by far they've had tonight. Now facing a third and nine. Jarboa's favorite town is split wide to the top of your screen. They're giving you a lot of look at the line of scrimmage. People walking around, so you have to account for everybody. Ball is up in the air, and it falls incomplete. And the pressure came by Baseko Lacumbo. Lacumbo came off the edge. What they did, they gave you lots of numbers at the line of scrimmage. There's only five offensive linemen. You have one back that's six protectors. And then you have to decide who's coming and who's not. Gumbo this time just came around the edge, just ran right past the tackle. And was able to disrupt the play. Brian Davis on to attempt. The 43-yard field goal. His range is pretty much 45 and in for the junior place kicker from Tennessee. 
And he's able to sneak that right through. So Arkansas State gets on the board. 29 to 3. Arkansas State got on the board. 12 play drive. 29 to 3. Typically, you have a family divided in these parts. Maybe it's the Civil War type shirt, Oregon State, Oregon. Do you ever think you'd see an Arkansas State, Oregon family divide there with the shirts? That is uh... first meeting between these two schools. <laughs> Sunbelt against Pac 12. Well, Luke Ferguson to kick off, and DeAnthony Thomas and Josh Huff are back deep, and that is why you see the short kickoff that is a live ball that is secured at about the 33 yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Joe, a huge day for another star in the Pac-12. This is Mark Geesley. You know how dangerous he is as a wide receiver. He caught 10 passes, 191 yards, touchdown. And then there is, of course, the end-to-end -end kickoff return for a touchdown. Trojans, number one team in the land, rolled Hawaii 49-10. to Pretty good day for Barkley, too. 351, four touches. Not a good start so far for Oklahoma, giving up a punt block for a touchdown. UTEP and the Sooners tied at seven in El Paso. Marquise Lee, there are some folks, and Robert Woods is obviously one of the best receivers in all of college football, but some folks who think Marquise Lee may end up being the better guy cashing checks on Sundays. B.J. Kelly with the reception, and Lee is one of those guys that stretches the field vertically, Matt. Well, Woods, Woods is exceptional. He is and exceptional. Lee, Lee's, Lee's still getting better. And Scary. now I saw, I saw Silas Red had a nice run down there. Had a touchdown, USC. transfer from Penn State. By the way, Marquise Lee almost came here to Oregon during the recruiting process. Could you imagine? Here's Barner here crossing the 50 and a stiff arm for a first down. Could you imagine DeAnthony Thomas and Marquise Lee on the same offense? That would have been the case. They were the same recruiting year, and it was close to happening. Of course, Thomas was a verbal commit to USC who flipped on signing day to Oregon. Well, they could use another speed guy. Nobody <laughs> nobody notice around here. We're all the same. They all, they are all so fast. But test the best thing about this team is their unselfishness. Watch them block downfield. Everybody, all assignment perfect. Just this is good Time stuff. Out. Oregon, number one. Timeout by Chip Kelly. You know, unselfish, sort of like a basketball team. Yeah. Right. We'll talk about that when we return. We'll show you exactly what we mean. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. And new Dr. Pepper 10. 10 bold calories, 23 flavors. Yes, that's the three-man weave, like the basketball drill you see before tip-off. You talked about Oregon being so unselfish and the ball never hitting the ground. You ever saw seen that before, a pregame football? And you know what, Tess? I've never seen a team warm up so fast that I did as this Oregon team. You got to be warmed up before you get out here to warm up. They do everything fast. Mario Ta completes this and a quick little move by DeAnthony Thomas. I like the way they deploy Anthony Thomas. DeAnthony Thomas is all over the place. He lines up in the slot. He lines up out wide. He lines up in the backfield. They motion him. They use him for punts. They use him for kickoffs. Any way to put him in space, it's really smartly done. Mario Ta. Look at that decision. You talk about being composed, playing in your first college game. Josh Huff with the reception. He gets there to the defender, knowing the first down's right in front of him, and cool enough to pull off that pass. Can't teach poise. Mario Ta has it. Marcus now to the end zone. Oh, great throw. I mean, this is just getting silly. Just silly. DeAnthony Thomas, another touchdown. Dad should be very happy, Mr. Mariota. Let me tell you something. Your son is as accurate 
as I've ever seen a first-time guy be. That is, that's impressive. Toa Mariota, who made the trip in from Hawaii, smiling, loving it. 16 of 17 is Marcus. 171 yards, and now that his third touchdown. Did a lot of different ways also, Tess. Stayed in the pocket. They've rolled him. He's been in complete control of this offense. It's impressive for his first time out. Look at this. This was the play before the touchdown. Let's just stop right here. Okay. Now he just dumps it off back underneath. That's to Huff. And then look at the accuracy on this throw to DeAnthony Thomas. It's well protected. He just lets him climb on top right where it has to be. Right on the button. DeAnthony Thomas, two touchdown receptions now. Dad in town is going to be a lot of trips coming here in the next few years to see Marcus. Can you imagine the confidence gains by having that be your first half of your college football career? So coming into the season, this was the way most experts talked about Oregon. Anthony Thomas is returning. Kenyon Barner, you got to like him. Uh, defense has a lot of talent. But who's this guy that's going to play quarterback? Is it going to be Brian Bennett or is yeah. it going to be Marcus that, Mariota? That was, that was the big question. And he's answering it in spades here tonight. And the part that you don't even see is, you know, he's six foot four inches. He sees the whole field. He's got awesome poise, and he's accurate. I mean, this is a dream come true. And Rocky Hayes just <laughs> takes a knee. Chip Kelly told us he's as poised as any guy I've been around. Very intelligent football player, Marcus Mariota. That's right to a spot, right above the backer. Right in stride. It's impressive. Only 18 years old. Opens up his career 16 of 17 and three touchdown passes against this completely outgunned and overmatched Arkansas State defense. 36 to 3. 12 57 to go in the half. Josh Jarbeau and Jarbeau being used plenty early on here. Well, he's been their whole offense. He's just been throwing that short stuff outside, occasionally they hand it to him, but it's been all underneath. He's been productive, but I mean, they're just, there's just too much on the other side of the field. Apple now, rolling, and he was looking for jo Jarbo again, but could not connect. Again, Morgan's not going to give him anything down the field. No. They're keeping everything in front of him. If you want to try to bleed him and be patient to hold, they're going to test your patience. Third and three. Pumps one way, goes the other, and does come up with the conversion for the first down as Alan Muse has the reception. Muse has a backstory that has grabbed so much attention. His family was displaced from Hurricane Katrina, and he himself had to come over medical hardship. He had a heart condition. It was discovered when he was a freshman. Now a senior had heart surgery and knew there was a very good chance that he would never play football again. J.D. McKissick. And then just to add to everything he's had to deal with, with the circumstances surrounding the death of his father. So it's been quite a struggle for Alan Mews, but a tough guy who's stayed the course throughout his college career. He's persevered. He loves the game. And he's been productive. Inside handoff, Oku with the first down as Arkansas State crosses midfield. We have coverage of Major League Baseball Sunday night. White Sox 
against Justin Verlander and the Tigers. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. You can also watch that on ESPN.com. Watch ESPN app. Of course, college football is going to continue tomorrow and Monday night with Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Strong arm, but intercepted well off the target. John Boyette. And Boyette trying to get to the outside, and he does, and spins his way before being thrown down across midfield. What did you say earlier, the football equivalent of a gym rat, John Boyette? That's him. Yeah, that, kid, that kid's a coach in the making. He's always here. He's always watching tape. He's studying things. And remember I mentioned to you earlier, they're not going to give up anything down the field. So the safety's where he has to be. And if there's an errant throw, which there was, over the head of Muse, and then Boyette just takes advantage of it. Where he's supposed to be, and then a nice return. Mario Ta back out there. And here comes DeAnthony Thomas. In no time at all, he's in the defensive backfield. 15 yards. Chip Kelly knows that he's got a good defense to complement this offense. You see in recent years where the defense has ranked, they're hoping to approve on those numbers. And everybody points to the SEC, the six straight national titles, and says, well, look at the defensive fronts. Look at that front seven and how dominant they are compared to other conferences. DeAnthony oh, Thomas, my. watch out. Spins his way in. And a guy who's getting a lot of preseason Heisman hype is showing you why. His third touchdown of the first half. This one on a 33-yard run. And not a big man, but runs through things. Catch the kid runs through some tackles there. And they ran through and ran away from Oregon him. there. Yeah. The free safety. What an impressive kid. Third touchdown of the half. He had the eye opener in the Rose Bowl, went for 91 yards, had a 64 yarder also down in Pasadena, and he's shining bright again tonight. People talking about the Anthony Thomas for the Heisman this year because of how absurd the touches to touchdown number is tonight. Seven touches of the ball, three touchdowns. He just consistently has these highlight moments. Now, tonight, playing Arkansas State, well, Puddles is going to be doing a lot of push-ups. I mean, <laughs> they just cannot hang with this level of speed and talent that Thomas possesses. He is, he is special. I mean, there's no question about it. Rocky Hayes with a touchback. You listen to the coaches talk about Thomas, and they just say things that they don't say about other players, Matt. Take well, a look great, back. Yeah, great players always have. You have to account for the great player beating somebody. Here's your blocks inside. This is designed to go this way. They're going to block this. Here's your free defender. They're expecting him to come this way. What happens? He reverses field. So now he's going to be one-on-one -on -one with him in the field. You're expecting everyone else to be blocked, and you just watch that. He just he takes care of them. With not even a shake, he just runs right past him. The thought of DeAnthony Thomas reversing field may be one of the scariest thoughts that a defensive coordinator could ever have, and one of the most exciting for a football fan. And so Koo struggles to find any ground there. So what's, ex what's, what's impressive about that, again, is going back to the unselfishness, now you're on the back side of the play, and you're a receiver, and you're still keeping your blocks. You're keeping your blocks because you know with a guy like the Anthony Thomas, he could be coming your way at any time. And as he does reverse field and he comes out the back side, you got your assignment done. Ryan Applin, the senior quarterback for Arkansas State, who his coach, Gus Malzahn, has such great respect for, and guy who led the way in the 
Sun Belt Conference a year ago, a real playmaker, holding many of the records in school history. Well, this is such an uphill battle tonight as he throws it to the outside of Derek Keaton. So a look back at the Black Mamba. How about a touchdown reception to get your night going? And he can beat you in so many different ways and catch from so many different spots in the field. You line him up as a wide receiver, he can beat you there. He's in the slot, he beats you there. Out of the backfield, throw it to him, hand it to him, punt return, kickoff. 64 yards rushing and a touchdown, 55 receiving and two touchdowns for the guy who has two nicknames, but he's so good he may need a third. They go with Dat, Black Mamba, and maybe this year he'll grab another one. Maybe. Applin, ball is loose at the 20, and then he just falls on it on third and seven, so they'll be sending out the punt team. Remember a year ago, the Anthony Thomas did it every which way with those 18 touchdowns, receiving, rushing, the kick returns, all-purpose yards, and he was sharing the ball, Matt. Right. I mean, this was a team that had... Well, Michael James and Kenyon Barner, and of course the freshman of the year. Many down in L.A. were hoping it would be for the Trojans. He was a commitment there. Flip went up to Oregon and has had great success. And they wanted him to be a corner. <laughs> and he, uh, he'd probably be a great corner, but he's phenomenal with the ball in his hands. Ryan Wilburn now into punt. And to return is Braylon Addison, another young player with a lot of speed. For the Ducks, this is going to bounce and settle in. Of course, the Rose Bowl last year is when everybody across the country had their jaw on the ground. The Anthony Thomas just sprinting past the Wisconsin defense had a 91 yarder and a 64 yarder, and look at the late drive here. Just coasting in those last 25 yards after that acceleration. Hawkins now, and Hawkins crosses midfield. Daryl Hawkins from Nebraska, 6'4 target for Mario Ta. And there is Byron Marshall. Yet more top-tier elite talent comes into the program. A true freshman, big recruit. Brother of the star running back at Arizona State, Cameron Marshall. That's off the hands of Hawkins. This A rare incompletion for Mario Ta. Yeah, it's been, it's, this has been a mismatch in terms of talent and speed. And it doesn't get any better because the second group and third group are just as talented and just as fast. Here's Marshall now in his college debut. And looks like he's going to be just short, depending on that mark. Byron Marshall, who, you know, they always have that guy who's the workhorse running back. Barner now gives way to Marshall. Here's fourth down. Let's see if the freshman can get it, and he does get the edge, so he's able to move the chains. You don't see the punter much, and you don't see field goal attempts much, Matt. <laughs> no, you don't. But you do see great runner's patience, and you see good vision out of all these backs. Barner, Anthony Thomas, and now this one. Byron Marshall. Mario Ta now out of the gun. Looking over his options, launches downfield and gets it complete. And that is B.J. Kelly. First year player, one of the receivers who redshirted a year ago and has really emerged as a top from that group among the receivers. Mario Ta with his eyes downfield. Mario Ta looking over his options. He does a little shake and bake and settles down inside the 10. Missed tackle that time as Eddie Porter was finding a lot of air. Eddie Porter got faked out as jockstrap playing sure down did. there. Second and one now as Marshall stays in the backfield with 
the first-year quarterback, Marcus Mariota. And that is incomplete. He was looking for Daryl Hawkins. So it'll be a third and one. There's his dad, Toa, came in from Hawaii. Nothing to be nervous about. You look up at that scoreboard and you see how your son's played in his first college game. He's got the shirt with the Oregon O in the middle of his last name. And the freshman, Marshall, will make it first and goal. They are knocking on the door of a half a century of hanging a 50 on the scoreboard here with over eight minutes to go in the half. And Marshall unable to find much room there as he gets it to the two-yard line tackled by Harold. Leading returning tackler for Arkansas State is Nathan Harold. Marshall's got some nice runner's patience. He's very, and that's, that's good for the inside game. Will likely be the future of the program as the every down back. Marcus just batted away at the last second. As Koakai. Coleman got his hand on it. That was, that was, he was trying to thread the needle between two defenders. Watch the head comes up. Rolling to his left. That's a tough throw. Koakai the intended target and Coleman was able to knock it away. Third and goal now. Marshall. Oh, nice. And he was wrapped up by Harold, who got a hold of his shoe there and took him down. So fourth and goal. Crowd reacting up 43 to 3 for fourth and goal. They're just running their stuff. That's what they do. Marshall, can he fight there? How about that second effort? Byron Marshall in a tug of war down at the goal line. And they are an extra point away from putting a 50 spot up on the board with 7.06 remaining in the half. That's what you want to see out of a young back. That's what you want to see out of any back. But watch him not stop and watch him keeping his legs going. Look at that. That's real. That is really well done. Right through Kyle Coleman, number 12 right there. Just didn't stop. Good finish. How about that scoreboard, folks? Look at the extra effort from the true freshman. Glad you're with us here for what could be a record night of offense for Oregon. Alongside Matt Bell and Shelly Smith, I'm Joe Tessitore. 50 to 3, Oregon over Arkansas State right now. 7.06 remaining. If they kept this pace, Matt, the boys in the truck have calculated if they kept this offensive pace, that Oregon would score 130 points. Yeah, not nice. Rocky Hayes takes a knee there. All right, let's look through what the Oregon offense has done tonight. Seven possessions, 50 points, and the average, they're doing that in a minute 32. That's scary. Saw Brian Bennett warming up, the backup quarterback who many thought would get the job. But the nod went to Marcus Mariota. Now you're Ryan Applin, senior quarterback, who's had a lot of success. You come out and you're down 47, and it's halfway through the second quarter. And then you go arena football there and give him a souvenir. <laughs> Applin doesn't have much of a shot here. 
Like I mentioned earlier, they're not letting him get anything deep down the field. What, what do you even do, Matt, if your Gus smells on, you just took over the program? I mean, do you just want to give your guys work? Do you just want to have this basically be a glorified exhibition? Well, keep in mind, you know, this is his first time out. You learn, you learn the most about your team in the first week. And you get better most of the time between the first and second week. Now, this is going to be one of those things where... Yeah, this is the first time they're they're game tested. This is the first time that they're running it under these conditions. And they're not going to find a more talented team to go against than what they have right here. Gus Malzahn said, we may, he said this on Tuesday, we may be playing the best team in the country. And he he wants to say they're the best team in the country. And he may see it, say it at the end of tonight. 50 to 3. They're not done yet there, Tess. Third and 11. Run a stunt, and he threw it behind his intended target as he was trying to get it to Jones. So Applin will trot off. And DeAnthony Thomas has been pulled from special teams. We can tell you that. They are sending Braylon Addison out now on punt return. He's playing that taser position that DeAnthony Thomas has played the role in recent years filled by Thomas and guys like Josh Huff. Uh, Addison himself he has got a lot of speed, very elusive guy, tough to bring down. Played quarterback in high school, return kicks. He's from Missouri City, Texas. And this is a line drive effort that scoots off to the side and then bounces back across the 50-yard line. So the weaponry has been shown by Oregon and you see how statistically impressive it is well Marcus Mariota has been basically flawless Kenyon Barner looks like he called it a night <laughs> and he's you know he started strong with the first play of the game and he never let up and now Marcus Mariota gives way to Brian Bennett who receives a very nice ovation from the crowd Bennett slings his first pass incomplete and the reason why the crowd is so supportive of Bennett is because it was well documented that Bennett went in and had a discussion with head coach Chip Kelly and there were even some reports that Bennett was going to be out of the program and transfer that you know people have gotten to him and say how can you sit behind Mariota for the remainder of your career remember Bennett's only a sophomore but he is a team guy and he went in and Chip Kelly, they had the discussion as Marshall searches ahead to the 44. And basically he said, hey, I want a guy that's competitive and says, I want do. to be number one. You exactly. wouldn't want it otherwise. If he didn't, if he didn't go in and fight for it, you'd be disappointed. He's a young, talented kid, and you want him to go in there. You want him to fight for the job. Third and five now, Bennett. Does he tuck it and run it himself? He does, and he comes up about a yard and a half short of the line to make. So he was tackled by Chris Stone. The one thing that I respect about the Bennett kid is it seems like right now in college football, if you don't get your way, you transfer right away. Right. And I, I don't like that. Make a commitment, stick with your commitment. Whatever happened to being a backup, right? Work your way towards the top. Of course, you know, and Chip Kelly, we had this discussion with him, is that fourth down run is going to depend on the mark. But Chip Kelly said, you know, that's become the culture of college basketball. That in yeah. college basketball, guys just transfer nonstop throughout their career just looking for where they're getting playing time. And it is a first down there on the mark. For more on Brian Bennett, let's check in with Shelly. Yes, Chip Kelly can tell us that, yes, it is a transfer culture. And everybody around Bennett was telling him, transfer, transfer, transfer. But his teammates pulled him aside and said, look, you are one injury away from leading this team. We need you on the sidelines. We need your leadership. And really convinced him that this was a place for him to stay. And that's what he's done. Shelly, what have you noted tonight in observing the disposition of Bennett and the way he's acted out there on the sidelines with all the success that Mario Ta has had tonight. Extremely supportive, and it had to be difficult for him. He led the team out through the tunnel onto this field. Mario Ta uh, was behind them. It was Bennett who took on that leadership role. He's been very supportive on the sidelines, uh, supporting his teammate. He gets it complete to Dwayne Stanford. 
And that one's on the shoulders right there, Bennett, because he bought some time, kept his eyes down the field as he slid to his left, throws a perfect strike. 17-yard completion to Stanford. Young man who we're going to see if he was going to get playing time tonight well, with this score. A lot of guys over there on the sideline are going to be rotated in. So a first down, and now Byron Marshall lowers his pads. Here's that last completion by Bennett, Matt. As he rolls by some time, keeps his eyes down the field, and his main cheerleader, Marcus Mariota. It's a nice thing to see, the support between these two. And they're good friends. They came in together, and they're pretty tight. That looked like it was almost a lateral as Bennett tried to get a little tricky there. But just to juxtapose the two, you can see the difference. Now, he's not running with the same people that Mario Todd did. But there's a difference in just the, their approach. It's, it's the, that poise that we talked about. Not that Bennett doesn't have any. It's just there's just a difference when Mario Todd's on the field. And this time it's Bassett. Kenny Bassett with the carry. And it'll make for a fourth down and five. And we don't see much of this out of Oregon. As we will get a field goal attempt by Rob Beard. Fourth year kicker for the Ducks. Mm -hmm. 35-yard attempt by Beard. And that is off to the mark, just to the left side. So Brian Bennett was just a little disappointed that his first series doesn't end across the goal line. Of course, there's been a lot of quarterback success here at Oregon, but in terms of what some of those names you're familiar with have done in their first year, much like Mario Ta is putting forth here, take you all the way back to the great Norm Van Brocklin in 47, went 7 and 3. Dan Fouts, 6-4 oh, and 1 for a guy who would go on to have such great success in the NFL. Joey Harrington, of course, holds so many records here in Eugene. And Mariota off, off to a sensational start in what could be a season of contending for the BCS national title throughout. Applin now is going to wing it to the top side there, finding Josh Jarbo. Well, when you wrap the towel around your head, night's over, all smiles, and why not when you go 18 for 22 and three touchdowns? And the way he did it. I mean, he bought time, he saw the field. He was accurate with the ball. It was a good first night. Applin, touchdown. Nice. Julian Jones sprinting his way for a touchdown, and what a nice job by Ryan Applin. A 72-yard touchdown completion to Julian Jones. And test that game courtesy of Applin's feet. It did. Because once he broke to that right side, he drew the defender up, and then the receiver got on top of him, and it was six quick. Just beautifully executed by Ryan Applin. Drew the defender up, and then threw a dart to Jones, who was free to sprint. So something to be taken away. Applin to Jones. Ryan Applin connecting with Julian Jones moments ago. See, Applin, once he broke to the right, that defender just hesitated, and Jones got on top of him. And just that little bit of hesitation was all it needed, and Applin took it to the house. See, his eyes go back inside. Just the hesitation. The safety doesn't come over the top. And then it's six quick. Troy Hill is the defensive back who initially had the coverage. And bit 
And Julian Jones, the junior receiver, coaches feel very good about the year he could have in the Sun Belt Conference. And with that completion, Ryan Applin, the school leader in total offense. Let's check in with Reese. Here at halftime, Alabama and Michigan played earlier tonight in the Cowboys Classic in Arlington, and it was a classic for only one side. The tide rolled easily. We'll show you how. Oklahoma's at halftime right now. They've had a disaster in special teams. They're tied with UTEP and USC. They didn't have much of a test, but Marquise Lee put on a show. So too did Matt Barkley. Mark and Lou are here. They'll tell you who their top performers were from the day coming up at halftime. Might be Mario Ta. It may be, Reese. Or DeAnthony Thomas with his efforts tonight. And Reese talking up USC a bit there with their performance to get the year started. Of course, everybody looking at November 3rd on the calendar. And here is Marshall again. And he's going to get a good amount of work tonight, Matt. You know, it's a really nice advantage when you have this much time left on the clock. You get this score up on the scoreboard, and you have a young team. We're just getting them in the experience helps. Who needs experience? And then not only with the back, but with this offensive line as well. Again, this is the second group that's in there. And so you just give yourself this to good. Byron Marshall, flag is down. Little brother of Cameron Marshall at Arizona State, who is one of those under the radar stars of college football, a guy that if you really watch him closely, is a strong running back for the Sun Devils. Holding, Holding offense, offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. Jack Foliard, our referee from the Pac-12 tonight, went down, had a nice conversation with Jack before the game, and he was telling us about, you know, week number one and the helmet rule being mm -hmm. a concern and saying, I think the players understand it. Doesn't mean that the helmets are staying on, but they understand <laughs> it. They know to run off the field when it comes off. Player safety and emphasis. You got to sit out of play if your helmet comes off now in college football. Brian Bennett, he's got wheels and he has a first down. Remember, he played a huge role for the team last year when Darren Thomas went down with injury. They got flushed out of the pocket and then just kept his eyes up, took what was there. He's a competitive sucker. Loves to play, wants to play. Marshall losing ground here, reversing field. And he is tripped up back at the 34-yard line. That was Chris Stone who was able to track him down as a loss of 10. See the next game up tomorrow. A couple of college football games, including Kentucky and Louisville. Louisville with Charlie Strong expected to be the favorites in the Big East this year. And Neil Everett getting some play call love from <laughs> Coach Kelly. Ayele Ford is in at running back now for the Ducks on second and 20. Ford is a walk on, but the coaches do have a lot of confidence in him. He's only five foot seven, 177 pounds. <laughs> There's Dustin Haynes, you see, signaling in the plays. Third string quarterback. Well, Scott Van Pelt now being put forth on the play call. Who the heck makes all those cards up? That guy right there. <laughs> the offensive wizard, Chip Kelly. Likes having fun with it. Bennett. Intercepted. As it was tipped up in the air. And then Chaz Scales was clear to come down with it. Kelly should have had it. Went through his hands. This ball's a pretty good throw. Off the play action, and the ball's out where it has to be, and that goes right through his hands. DJ Kelly couldn't secure it. Came back to the ball and deflected, and Chaz Scales came up with a pickoff. So let's see if Ryan Applin can build upon things here. Under a minute to go in the half.
Applin going to keep it himself, and he will dive ahead. And it's going to be close to that first down mark. He's got some game, Tess. Applin, Applin's got a little bit of game to him. Gus Malzahn loves the kid. Says in the right system, he would have no doubt that he could be a starter in the SEC. So the yardage numbers that he's put up. That was a big hit that oh. time. Ball came loose, and that is a live ball. This is Tony Washington. Tony Washington, the reserve defensive end, was in the right place. Julian Jones was the receiver, and Terrence Mitchell came in and blew up the end of that play. Looks like Applin may have been hurt in that play, holding his hand. Yeah, you can see him grabbing his thumb there. Cliff Mitchell, the right guard, also being tended to by the medical staff, and he's now walking off the field. Just a disaster of a down for Arkansas State. I want to take a look back at this and see what happened. It looked like the receiver here, Jones. He's caught. Ball is, ball is loose. Ball hits the ground. Yeah, his knee hit first, though, it looked like. Now, I think they're going to take a good look at this. I think they're going to bring that one back. Well, if they're, saying the, the, if they're saying that on the field they're ruling it an interception, then that cannot be the case. At no. best, they can rule it a fumble. I don't believe it's a fumble. His knee was down. But you, you can see that the ball and the body made contact <laughs> with the ground there. So we'll see if they reverse this. And Tony Washington saw a ball and said, I'm on top of that. I'll take it. And you see Jim Northcutt, our replay official. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? I think this one comes back. I think there's the catch. Knees down while he had the ball. Or is it even a reception at all? See his knees down. Does he secure the ball through the act? He may not. That's that's a good that's a good point. That's, you you may be there. right right there. Now it. If that's the case, that could be. And they're also probably looking to see is his hand underneath the yes. ball. And, and then it launches up. And, and in that case, on. it would be an interception. Remember, they need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which is an interception. If they're saying that he had control and his knee was down, then it comes back. But if he's saying that his hand was under it and he never really had control, his hand was under it, then it goes pop up the air, then it is an interception. Glad we cleared that up. After video review, the pass did hit the ground. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. It'll so they're saying. On the 32 yard line, two yards to go. With the clock operator, please reset the clock to 29 seconds. 29 seconds. So he's saying that his hand was not under it, and the ball exactly. did hit the ground. Yeah, it's what we initially saw. 29 seconds remains in this first half of what has just been an offensive display by Oregon. And then a slow stall out here in the final moments of the second quarter. So Applin's thumb must be okay since he's back in. Those shoes will always get the best of you. <laughs> Big lineman with a back heel issue. And it's been a fiesta of sorts, hasn't it? If you're wearing. She forgot to shave off her mustache. Lightning yellow and apple green, the color scheme of choice tonight.
Officials talking things over. And the replay went as an incomplete pass. As they reversed that call. So they reset this third and two. Correction, it will be third down and less than a yard. Call it a long one. Chris Malzahn was talking to the head linesman to his side, and they got this thing straightened back out, so that one's on the coach. Oku in the backfield here on third and one. And he has blockers in front with the first down. And finally taken down at the 21-yard line. 24 seconds for the moment. Chains move. Two timeouts remaining for Arkansas State. Applin going to take a shot. And Jarbo was the intended target, but he threw it long into the outside. That leaves 11 seconds remaining. And it was well covered. Marcus Mariota, just an observer now. Hanging with his guys. Seeing what some of these reserve defensive players can offer up. Applin's going to tuck and run and slide. And the clock is at three seconds. As they will use a timeout here. Timeout. Arkansas State. That's their second timeout this half. You know, I asked this you. This will be a 30 second timeout. Early in the second quarter if you're Gus Malzahn I mean the scoreboard was crooked right from the beginning what do you say to your team well they've played pretty decent past couple minutes in this kind of a situation because this is the hole that they got themselves into well and it started fast and it didn't slow down and Mario Ta was hot and DeAnthony Thomas was doing his usual thing Kenyon Barmer added to it and then oh the freshman got involved as well I think one of the things that we had spoken about Tess was the fact that look it's it's new it's new system it's but just just keep playing kids keep doing what you're doing and now they you know they're gonna hang with 13 on the half now they Brian Davis here 29 yard attempt and that is no good. He was pretty solid inside of 40 a year ago, but can't connect here as we have reached halftime. Marcus Mariota, three touchdown passes. Here's Shelly. All right, Chip, you said before the game that you expected everything from your young freshman quarterback. In your mind, what'd you get? I thought he did a really nice job. They brought some pressure on him early. He made some real good decisions with the football. Um, that's what kind of we expected. Um, that's what we've seen from since spring ball and same with them during during preseason camp here. So. And defensively, what did you like? I, I thought our guys were running to the ball and doing a great job. You know, we got caught on that one deep pass there, but our guys will make a great adjustment at halftime. So. Great. Thanks, Chip. All smiles for Chip. Mario Ta, 200 yards and three touchdowns. DeAnthony Thomas, three touchdowns. Let's join Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz back in the studio for the college football halftime report. Gentlemen. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen. What was it about that question mark at quarterback for the Ducks? <laughs> a first-year yeah. guy, never played in a college game, and we're going to hand him the keys to this beautiful revving car here that's so going to contend for a title. Yeah, what did he do? He threw four incompletions. That was about as bad as it got. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he completely manhandled and this offense and he did it a variety of ways. But the biggest way, I mean, he beat you with his arm from the pocket. He beat you with his arm when he rolled out. He threw on the run. He was accurate. 
But Tessie had great poise. He had great poise. And Coach Chip Kelly said he was unflappable at the beginning of his game. That's exactly what he is. He, the game's not too big for him. The lights came on, and he was very comfortable with it. That's a great sign for this Oregon team. You know who was just as calm and cool as he was? Was Chip Kelly talking about him yesterday to yeah. us. He knew what he was sitting on here. Yeah. He knew all along. We got a glimpse in the spring game, and now the rest of the country is getting a good look at just how talented this young man from Honolulu, Hawaii is as Arkansas State uh, receive here to start the second half. Andrew Tryon, the defensive back, now as a kick returner, and he is taken down at the 14-yard line that time by Eric Dargan. Well, let's see if Applin can continue a little bit of what he's had at the end of the third quarter. Because I think it's important as you look at the stats, 417 total to 228. And the majority of that 228 for Arkansas State came at the end of the third quarter. End of the first half there. Uh, first right. half, rather. I'm sorry. And, um, and they got a little bit of something going. I think it's important for them to continue that right now. Yeah, I thought they started to have some success and find a rhythm. Josh Jarbeau, and Jarbeau is taken down at the 21-yard line by Derek Malone. You know, I really you give him credit because they were in such a hole right from the start. I mean, the scoreboard just got silly, but they did stay composed at Arkansas State. Sending them back to doing what they're doing, just take what the defense was giving them, and then part of that was a mistake off the corner, and the safety didn't get over the top, and then it was six quick. So the offense of Gus Malzahn does work. He just... Let it get unwrapped a little bit. Jarbo now taken down at the 20. Shelly, what do you have? I spoke with Gus Malzahn, and he said they embarrassed us. We have to man up right now. He said he told them in the locker room that this could be the defining moment of their season. So we had nothing that we can build on in the second half. We just have to man up and play football. Joe? Defining moment of their season, and you're staring that 50 to 10 in the face just try to make some small gains i assume he's saying as applin makes a good game here for a first down playing spirited there is the senior ryan applin applin's got some game we said that from the start we said you know a night at the improv with him works and so when things break down i think he's actually at his best yeah, yeah malzahn said that to us he said listen you know a guy who can create on his own a little unorthodox but he can make plays once he gets into the midst of that Sun Belt Conference, you're going to see these numbers go up. There's a little pump fake. He was able to get him to bite on it. He's got some game. It's fun to watch him. He needs some help. And look, this is let's be let's be fair here. The people that Oregon are recruiting are more talented than the people Arkansas State are recruiting. I mean, that's that's just the way it is. Gus Malzahn has talked about his recruiting efforts as. He has blanketed the state of Arkansas, wants to reach out to all the high school coaches. That could have been a live ball there. It was incomplete, and John Boyette was getting after it. You can see the frustration of Malzahn a bit. Not too happy with it. Now, if he wants to be the Boise State of, of down in, in that Sun Belt Conference, then it's going to come down to one main thing. It's not a recruiter's game. It's an evaluator's game. And that's where that staff and he will have to be really good. Can have to he evaluate. pick up the scraps and pieces of those left over in the SEC yes. recruiting bed? There's a Peace lot of kids down together. there, Tess. A lot of kids. Much like Chris Peterson does up at Boise. He had to at the beginning. Nice throw. Well, that was a good throw there for a first down completion that time to Anthony Kinsey. You know what I noticed watching Boise State the other day, Friday night? Well, outstanding game up at Michigan State. All the guys they lost, six NFL draft choices, and the all-time winningest quarterback in Kellen Moore. Now you get the sense that they're a program because you see how the recruiting has paid off and it's increased. They're getting a different kind of kid up there now as Applin. As it, there's an example of Applin just trying to create something as he slingshots its sidearm to Jarbo. Boise State, years ago, if they had lost that amount of talent and a quarterback with more, probably wouldn't have been able to compete the way they did at Michigan State Friday night. On the road in against an excellent defense, and they more than held their own. They were in that game right to the end. It could have gone either way. I just think that's testament to Chris Peterson. I think he's one of the best coaches in all of football. 
in stride here. Darian Griswold with the completion. Ryan Applin able to find Griswold. 25 yard reception by Griswold. It's a good start here. But they in the second it. half by Arkansas State. So that message by Melzahn as Oku spins free, former Tennessee Vol. He was a recruit for Lane Kiffin when the current USC head coach was at Tennessee. Struggled a bit under Derek Dooley. Left the program. Got himself in trouble with the law, but that cleared up as some charges were dropped and now playing here at Arkansas State after sitting out last year, so eligible to play. Oku will have a good season. This offensive line a little bit outmatched in the first half. Remember, Michael Dyer was supposed to be a part of this effort here at Arkansas State, the former BCS title game star, but he was dismissed from the program a month ago. Applin to the end zone. And overthrown into the outside of Alan Hughes. Remember, Michael Dyer, all the success he had with Gus Malzahn when he was at Auburn. Of course, had that sensational play in the BCS title game, keeping his balance, rolling on top of an Oregon defender, and able to scoot down and put Auburn into position for what would be the game-winning field goal. That was when Gus Malzahn was the offensive coordinator for the Tigers meeting up with Chip Kelly's team. Dyer no longer a part of the program in Arkansas State after transferring in to try to continue on with his college career. In fact, he's enrolled at a Baptist college in Arkansas not playing football, just going about business as a student for now. Second and ten. And Applin under pressure throws it away. The pressure came from Jared Eber. Yeah, they did bring pressure in. And one of the things that Arkansas State does under Miles on is they'll get to the line of scrimmage, they'll start their cadence, and then Oregon, they showed their blitz. And then he changed things at the line of scrimmage. They still came with the blitz, but Applin wasn't able to get it out. Third and ten now. Play clock at three. Applin looks one way, comes back the other. Oku. And Oku could not get past Terrence Mitchell. And there was the difference. There's the difference right there. Oku, their best runner. Now, had that been DeAnthony Thomas yes. out, in, out in space one on one, the referee oh. would be having his arms in the air right now. <laughs> Plant one foot, accelerate in the other direction. Exactly. Goodbye. Right. Of course, DeAnthony Thomas, the Heisman Trophy candidate for Oregon who touched the ball on offense seven times tonight and had three touchdowns. Brian Davis. And Davis is able to put that through as Gus Malzahn is still working away, watching his offense grind in this uphill challenge at Austin. is presented by Vizio. We welcome you back to Autzen Stadium, number five, Oregon. They were just unstoppable early on. 50 points in the first half. I mean, they came off the accelerator about halfway through the second quarter, and since then, Arkansas State tried to, try to make some gains offensively. They've been steady and inspired to put 13 points on the board once again a short kick and that fair catch came from Koa Kai. Tess any way you looked at it when the first liners were in Mario Ta, Barner, Thomas they were electric they were unstoppable it was pedal to the metal 50 points happened at about a quarter and a half so this team is primed and ready to go. A lot of smiles over on the sideline of the guys who have their helmets off, including 
Barner and Thomas and Mario Todd. Now, Brian Bennett is in at quarterback as he hands off to Byron Marsh. I want to ask you this, Matt, because Mario Todd and Bennett, they were in a battle in the spring, a battle in the fall, mm -hmm. but Darren Thomas was the quarterback last year, and I know we led him to a Rose Bowl. There are a lot of people in this area that really question whether or not Darren Thomas, even if he came back, would have won the starting job back. That would have been a heck of a battle, but I got to tell you, this Mario Todd kid is so impressive. I mean, Bennett's no slouch, but you could see the difference between the two quarterbacks, just in terms of how they run the offense and, and the poise and the presence that they have. Raymond Addison with the reception. Sets up a third and two. And Marshall is able to power his way for a first down. Here's a guy you're going to hear a lot of in the coming years. Number nine, Byron Marshall. Another one of these key recruits for Chip Kelly. He targets certain offensive players that fit his system. And in the mold of what he's had with Kenyon Barner comes Byron Marshall. His brother proven running back in the Pac-12 with Arizona State. There's play action now for Bennett down the middle of the field and he underthrew the intended target as you saw that Will Murphy tried to come back for the ball. Murphy had a chance at it. Decent protection. Now he's going to get some pressure right at the end. Stands in there. Takes the hit. Now watch him come back to the ball. That's the, the defender did a nice job there of getting his hand back inside. Second and ten. And here's Marshall, and he reverses field and cuts back. And Marshall able to get it to the 35-yard line, tackled by Nathan Harold and Tim Starson. Reminder, tomorrow, Kentucky and Louisville, Alabama State, Bethune-Cookman. Kentucky and Louisville. Charlie Strong has been doing a very nice job at Louisville. Guy who had such success in the SEC as a coordinator with Urban Meyer. And Bennett able to get this complete past midfield to Eric Dungy. So the two quarterbacks who competed in fall camp. Mario Ta won the job. It is first career start tonight. Bennett played last year against Colorado making a start. Actually came out and helped this team in a tough spot when Darren Thomas went down against Arizona State and Bennett came in and closed out the game. And here goes Marshall. He's got some game too. Well, Michael James off to the NFL but here's what he had to say about Mario Tah. He will possibly be the best quarterback to ever play at Oregon. Now that's a big time statement coming from a guy who was around such talented players. But for those who have been close to the program and have seen Marcus Mario Ta develop over the course of the past year, they really believe in him. Well, let me just tell you one thing. Players know players. And Michael, LaMichael played with him a year ago. That ball was almost intercepted as Bennett was slinging it downfield. Sterling Young was trying to get after it. You know, Chip Kelly said, here's what I noticed the kid was good. Eight days into camp last year, said, my offense is tough to learn. Eight days into camp, he had it. He knew it. The funny part was he he was frustrated the first week because he hadn't learned it earlier. He was Mar that's amazing. Mario Ta was disappointed in himself. Mm -hmm. Third and ten now. He only brings three against Bennett and they set up the screen. This is Bassett. There is a flag down, so we'll see if this play holds. <laughs> so Michael James last year, oh, they they were excited. Offense, number 74, 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. First of all, Michael James dealt with injuries last year, and Kenyon Barner came in. He had over 100 yards in both of the games that Michael James missed. Barner started the night, 
and then like most of the star players was quick to exit once the score got out of control he finished the night with 66 yards and a couple of touchdowns so third and 20 after the penalty and quickly getting it out to Addison and Addison loses the ball as he scoots to the side but it's easy why this you know you talk to the coaches they say well I can't wait to watch this Braylon Addison just a freshman he's got some skills the ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds by rule it'll come back to the spot of the fumble and that will mean that we get a 47 yard attempt from Rob Beard now his career long is from 42 once again Oregon is not a team you associate with field goals Remember what happened last year and losing the last second game to USC missed opportunity there. So this would be a career long for beer. Short but a flag. Prior to the snap, delay a game offense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. And Chip's having fun with this one. Well, Oregon fans, <laughs> Oregon fans right now might be saying, Chip, why don't you just go ahead and punt it? And I think he might. Yeah, I think uh, knowing the range of Rob Beard, career long of 42, and 52 is asking a lot. So Jackson Rice comes in, talented four-year starter, was one of three finalists for the Ray Guy Award last season. This is the first punt of the night for Oregon 740 to go with reserves in the game in the third and it's your first punt and it takes a bounce that favors Arkansas State some Hollywood history was made here long ago it's tough to come this far and lose Look, a new feel, a new way to Madden forever. Rated everyone. Does that look familiar to you, Matt Miller? Oh, uh, sure does. Animal House was filmed right here at Oregon. Food fight! They filmed it right there in the Herb Memorial Union. Fishbowl dining area. Classic. Yes, what I am now. <laughs> oh, I don't want the answer to that. I recall that scene. A zip. That was awesome. Bluto with a GPA of 0, 0.0. Fat, <laughs> fat, dumb, and stupid. There's no way to go through life, Blue. <laughs> Senator Blue Tarski. If you have any more of that shtick, it is highly recommended with 725 <laughs> left in the third at 50 to 13. Oh, that was a classic. Leave him alone. He's on a roll. Ryan Applin and Arkansas State is trying to make the most of things here. Jackson with a first down carry out across to the 33 yard line. <laughs> Shelly, who's your special guest down there? At field well, level? it's a guy who's done some damage on this field before. LaMichael James now with the San Francisco 49ers. LaMichael, what's it like being back as an alum? You know, it's kind of fun. You know, I just want to come out here and see uh, Marcus and uh, Kenyon and DeAnthony and a couple of my friends. Uh, you know, come out here and have fun and, you know, and do that thing. And, uh, you know, that's the only thing you can do is have fun in this offense, you know. So I just want to come out and show my support. Now, you tweeted that you said Marcus could be the greatest Duck quarterback ever. What makes you think that? You know, he's just very poised. You know, he's a hard worker. Uh, I was with him through his, you know, his red shirt year, and I see him every day. And uh, I think either one of those quarterbacks could be the best quarterback here. You know, whoever got the job, I think they'll do a great job. And, you know, Marcus got the job, so, you know, apparently uh, I'm going to roll with him for right now. And, uh, you know, he's a great quarterback, and, you know, I'm excited to see him play. How good is DeAnthony Thomas? What do you like watching about him? You no, know, he's an exciting player. You know, he's a human highlight reel. You know, anytime he gets the ball, you know, he's going to make a couple guys miss, uh, outrun guys. You know, he's, he's really fun to watch. You know, he makes you want to come to the games and pay attention. I know you're very close with Kenyon Barner. You walked off with him at halftime. What kind of advice have you given him about stepping into these shoes here? 
you really just got to take care of your body. You know, you got to be smart. Uh, there's going to be guys gunning for you, you know, at all times, uh, hitting you. Uh, even when you don't got the ball, I think he told me that somebody did him like that tonight already. So uh, I think, you know, he's, he's ready to step up, you know. Uh, He's not just one of those guys that just sat behind me. I think, you know, Kenyon could have went to any program in the country and started, and I think he's that good. Now, I know you were in at halftime. Did you address the team? You talked to the guys? No, you know, uh, I don't want it to be about me. You know, it's about them. That's the one reason I didn't want to come on the sideline at first, because I want them to go out there and have fun and play. You know, it's not about me. It's about the team. How far can this team go? They're good. You know, uh, I think they have probably one of the best defenses I've seen here. You know, and uh, offensively, you know, they're phenomenal. You know, uh, Marcus, DeAnthony, Josh, you know, they have so many different weapons. And uh, Kenya, you know, they just have so many guys that can step in and get the job done. You know, it's, they're going to be exciting, uh, hard to beat. What's been the biggest difference for you between playing college and in the NFL? Oh, you know, the speed of the game is so much different. You know, I was telling Kenya when I was like, I was like, man, this is so slow. You know, once you're in the NFL, you know, everybody's fast. You know, everybody's probably the best player in their team. And, uh, you know, it's just so much difference, you know, in the game and uh, the game speed. Are you feeling missed here at all tonight? Oh, you know, uh, I don't probably know. You know, uh, they have a lot of good players on the team. I don't think I'm that missed. You know, they picked up right where they left off. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, LaMichael. Thanks, Shelly. Great to hear from LaMichael James, all-time leading rusher at Oregon. You know, it's interesting as Arkansas State faces a third and two. But when Shelly asked him about, you know, is, is this the year? You guys could, could possibly, how far could things go? First thing he referenced was the defense. Yes. It's becoming a common theme up here when you take a look at what this team offers this year is how talented the first group of defenders that Nick Aliotti, the coordinator, has. Aliotti in his 21st year here. Uh, they're loaded. There's Michael Clay, fine middle linebacker. Now, obviously, top tier guys have been out of this game for a while, including Deion Jordan, who had a two point conversion score at their star defensive end to start the night. What I found interesting was the Michael James, who himself has great speed. The first thing he noticed at the next level is how fast it is. Isn't that something? This looks slow to me. Whoever says Oregon looks slow. Ball is loose on the ground on fourth and two. So no matter who has it at the bottom of the pile, it'll be Oregon's ball. Would have been either a turnover on downs or a fumble recovery. And Eric Dargan does indeed recover it. 5.02 to go in the third, 50 to 13. That's what they look at when you've had when you've hung half a half a hundred on them at half. Last six national champs, you know what conference they come from. You also know a common theme, with the exception of Auburn in 2010, which belied the conventional wisdom of how you put together a title-winning team, and that is with defense in the SEC. As Oregon is back to business with Ayali Ford. So defense has been the constant theme, and we've heard this before, especially when the SEC matches up with teams like Oregon. Saw it today. There was the difference. There's the difference in the SEC is their defense. And where does it show up? It shows up right down the middle. They all have pass rushers across the board. They're big down the middle. The front seven, yes. stout, athletic, physical. They can get after it, and it's not just four guys. It's eight guys up there that you can rotate into that front four. And it's a lot like what we're seeing out of Oregon. Now, Oregon's not quite as big as what you're seeing in the SEC, but they're getting, I mean, they're, 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 uh, they can run, and they have the speed on the outside. They just don't have the, the big tanks in the middle. And here on third and two, that is Ford coming up short as he's tackled by Nathan Harold. Uh, so it begs the question, as much as we've lauded the talent, especially that guy right there, Deion Jordan, of Oregon defensively this year, have they upgraded defensively yes. enough where you consider them a legitimate national title contender capable of stopping the streak of the SEC? Yeah, well, I think they're built for the Pac-12. But I do believe that for a game like we get to a championship game, yeah, they can hang. Then not only will they hang, they'll be able to play with them step for step. And it'll be interesting to see how it goes because depth is the key. And I think they have depth this year, Joe. Nick Aliotti 
had a very frank discussion with us. Um, you know, confident in what they've accomplished, understanding the talent. Gus Malzahn probably said it best the other day when we met with him, when he said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, they are far better than the team we faced in yes. the BCS title game. Remember Malzahn was the offensive coordinator for Auburn. Oku now, and he has first down yardage. Well, Monday night, we are going to wrap up week one of the college football season, and this is a good one. Georgia Tech on the road against Virginia Tech starting the year as number 16 are the Hokies. It's college football primetime presented by Russell Athletic. Monday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Curious your thoughts on Virginia Tech. Everybody points to the big quarterback, Logan Thomas, but in discussions you and I have, you said don't concentrate on Thomas. It's the young athletic defense. Boy, they can really rush the pass, and they, and they have depth. They have guys who can run on the outside, and I watched them in the spring, and every time you watch them put the tape on, they had another guy who could get off the ball. Now, what they don't have right now is an accomplished runner. That's what they're going to need. I want to remind you that you can learn how to help in the wake of Hurricane Tropical Storm Isaac that has affected so many people in so many states, especially the Gulf region. And for that disaster and for others, you can visit redcross.org as they are always collecting money ahead of disasters. And the money goes to both current and future situations that could occur as Oku with tremendous leg drive down to the 22-yard line. They're still working hard. 50 to 13, and Arkansas State just wants to try to close into that gap and finish up things strong. Good blocking in front for Oku. And now it is time for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Which three schools are the only to play in four straight BCS bowl games? Talking about BCS national title and how defense has led the way in the SEC for the better part of six years. Second and one. First down and inside the 10 goes Frankie Jackson. Three schools playing four straight BCS bowl games. Of course, Oregon's been on a great run of BCS success. Miami, Ohio State, and the USC team from 06 to 09. Now Oregon's had Rose Bowl, BCS title, and Rose Bowl. Josh Jarbeau dives his way across the goal line. See how they got that out. You have two defenders sitting out there, and that the guy on the line of scrimmage is going to block the first one, and it's a game of space. It's the the receiver now is going to have a one-on-one, -on -one and he there has he has to win. He comes back inside. That's pretty well done. So Muse comes over, sets that block, and then Jarbo has to do his job, and he did. Little pride for Arkansas State, showing it off here. Can be. They were in a hole so early. And once again, constantly kicking short to stay away from breakaway speed of Oregon. That's Pharaoh Brown, the reserve tight end with the fair catch. You know, Tess. Yes. Yeah, I, I believe, you know, Coach Malzahn, he knew what he was getting into here. And I think what he really wanted to see, look, he knew he was getting his doors blown in in the first two quarters this game was over. Heck, in the first quarter the game was over. But what he's done with his group is he's kept them in and he's running his offense and that will pay dividends down the line. Bennett's still in at quarterback and a flag comes down as Byron Marshall is getting a lot of work here. Freshman running back. Started this drive with 17 carries. A lot of young guys in there. You see Farrell Brown, the tight end. They're high on him. We talked about holding offense number 63, 10-yard penalty. 
First down. There's foul right there. And like you and I said all, all week, every team needs a pharaoh. Well, they got their 6'6 six, six freshman. He said he was a bit of a surprise of camp. They liked the way he developed. And right next to him is big number 74, who goes 6'7", 3'11", and has a famous dad. <laughs> and a nice mean streak, too. And Howie he's, Long's son, Kyle. He's, he's just figuring this stuff out. He's, he's an athletic kid, man. Look at Brian Bennett work his way. Let me ask you this about Kyle Long because he's taken a very strange route to play the offensive line at Oregon. He was a baseball player. Yes. He gave that up at Florida State, comes here, uh, listed as a senior. So th this is it. This is his year of eligibility. Uh, is he a pro prospect? Oh, yeah. He uh, Athletically, there is no question. His, he lacks, all he lacks is experience. That's the first thing. He's also, he's appealed to the NCAA to try to get a year back. And so there's there's a possibility there with that. But, but if you're if you I mean you had that job did. for years. If you're assessing him, he, you feel comfortable taking a shot at him. A baseball player comes to football for a year of eligibility at Oregon, and then. Well, he does some things you can't teach. He has great hips, not good, great. He's got great feet. What do you mean, Matt, as an evaluator? And I hear that from you and other guys often. But for the layman out there, when you say he's got great hips, what exactly does that mean? And, ooh, and the nice little mean streak on top of it. <laughs> like yeah, well, here's what he, he's not a waist bender. He bends at the knees. He can, and what he can do is if somebody kind of gets the better of him, he can reset himself and sink down again. And so those guys are rare people. Plus, he's got very good hands. He's got quick hands. He's strong. He's got nice length. At six foot seven, he's a smart kid. He's just figuring the game out. There's a completion that time to Rasan Vaughn, the senior from Fresno, California. His second year at Oregon, he was a JUCO transfer. A lot of people thought of him as possibly being a breakout kind of guy this year. He's got speed, he's got good hands, but we haven't seen much of him. I mean, they're just loaded out at the perimeter. And as we come to the end, of the third quarter, Arkansas State making small strides, playing with pride, closing it to a 30-point game. Puddles is stretching because he's been doing a lot of push-ups. 50 to 20, Oregon. First Saturday of the season of college football. Some of the headlines that everybody will be reading tomorrow. Of course, him starting State College with everybody's attention. We'll talk about that in a moment. Brian Bennett swings it cross field. And that is incomplete. So he was looking for Stanford. So Bill O'Brien starts his career at Penn State with a loss to Ohio. Tyler Tennelton played well for the Bobcats. Meanwhile, Urban Meyer saw Braxton Miller in good form in defeating Miami of Ohio. Bennett on second and ten, and he's going to try to block for Marshall here. Marshall crossing midfield, a stiff arm, and Marshall gets to the 46, tackled by Harold. Over in Ireland, Notre Dame started the day early. Millen, I got up at 5.30 in the morning here at the Hilton Garden Inn in beautiful Eugene to watch Notre Dame Navy and college game day this morning, 6 a.m. Pacific time. And then down there in the Cowboys Classic, well, it wasn't exactly a classic. Roll Tide rolled over Michigan. And what we talked about before about the SEC and the defense, yeah, they showed itself this afternoon. They were just dominant. Farrell Brown with the reception. That picked off Denard Robinson early. They were physical. They were fast. Uh, A.J. McCarron was managing the situation. It, much like this game, it was one of those games that in the first half, you knew which way it was going. Lee Corso and the Boston Red Sox being signaled in here. Chip Kelly, of course, a New England native, has some of his buddies in town visiting this week. One of those guys works with the Red Sox organization. Chip's an interesting character to visit with. I like him. 
Yeah, he's. It's always fun when you're sitting in a coach's office and uh, after talking through the two deep. Oh, the Hartford Whalers get it. The old whale logo. Let me tell you something. There are a lot of people but, back in the 860 area code who right now would like to hear Brass Bonanza, the old Whalers fight song. <laughs> so you saw the Whalers. Well, I, I saw the Hartford Whalers. I saw the Burger King. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the way your mind works. <laughs> Please. I'm telling you, Chip Kelly's an interesting character. You know what he did this summer? Ran with the Bulls over in Pamplona. With Scott Frost, the assistant coach. He actually said, yes, this happened. We ran. That was Frank back in Kona July. Terry Francona made an appearance right there. Yeah. This kid Marshall, he's going to be pretty good. How did you like when Chip was describing running with the Bulls with us? And he said, I scouted the whole thing. It was like doing game film. I knew where I needed to be, how to get out of the way. He says, everybody's dressed in white with a red sash. And he said, I get, down, I get to the stadium at the end, and I'm looking around, and here's some guy with a bright green Tim Tebow shirt on. He said, no, Everybody white, red sash, Tebow jersey. The said, ubiquitous Tebow jersey. He said, he said, I know he's big, but I didn't think he was that big. Danny. With a lot of time, and then he tucks it and just gains a couple of yards. So we're sitting there with Chip Kelly yesterday, and I always find this interesting. Chip can have a conversation on any subject matter yes. there is, including, including yesterday at one point, ranking World War II films. Nicely done, too, I might add. Which he went with Bridge Over River Kwai. Yes. Among his uh, tons of Navarone didn't make it. Third and ten now for Brian Bennett. It's out of the way of the rush and then quickly swings it. And this will go for a first down to Ben Butterfield. Some of the accomplishments of Chip Kelly when you look through the resume and you know, keep in mind it's only his fourth season. You know about the national title appearance. How about this? He has had more BCS Bowl appearances than he has had conference losses. He's been the three. He's only had two on the other side. That's a touchdown for the Ducks. Hassan Vaughn calling in the touchdown reception. I like his approach. I like the way Chip Kelly approaches it. He worries about his guys. He puts all the requisite work in, but he puts a premium on, not like I said before, on the evaluation process. He wants a certain type guy here. And this is only his fourth year in this system, of his system. And he's getting a little bit bigger, a little more physical, but they're all fit. That's a great point you make, Matt, because he says all the time, I need the guy that fits what I do. A guy like this, Brian Bennett, didn't get the starting job, but ultra talented. in 45 years. Sports Center after the game. Oh, Puddles is getting a workout. You knew this one was coming. Number five, Oregon. 11.36 to go. Just having scored again, 57 to 20. Rose Bowl champs from last season, starting the year number five. Seven top 10 AP finishes since 2000. Coming off a 13 play touchdown drive with Son Vaughn with a seven yard touchdown reception. This is Rocky Hayes. We'll take a quick break and come back, finish things up in Austin. Tree and HP, if you're going to do something, make it matter. Hey, Mellon, that's the Hayward Field, the centerpiece of Tracktown USA. You know they got such a grand history with track and field here at Oregon. Some say the world's most famous track and field venue, named for Coach Bill Hayward. He was the coach from 1904 to 47. There's three. That was a track meet early on that Oregon 
got to the finish line in quick order. I wonder what DeAnthony Thomas would be like if he just fully committed to being a track guy. Would he be one of those world class speed, you know, just short of Usain Bolt kind of guys? Yeah, I don't know if he's, if he's a Bolt guy. Or is guy, he a football but... speed kind of guy? Well, I, no, he, he got track speed. He's got legit speed. You know, those. it's been interesting for me over the years to watch those particular guys. I think the fastest guy that I've ever seen on a football field is Deion Sanders. And I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I, I really believe that he could have brought home a gold medal had he trained to run in the Olympics. Arkansas State here in the second half has you know, tried to stay the course and just accomplish Small tasks here of moving the ball against some of the reserves for Oregon. Julian Jones there. You know, it was an interesting discussion this summer about track speed, football speed, uh, especially as you see the numbers of Anthony Thomas and what his speed produced tonight was seven touches for three touchdowns. Uh, Denard Robinson at one point after the summer game spoke up and said, I could beat Bolt in a 40-yard dash. I could beat Usain Bolt. Now, Bolt is a closer. Right. He doesn't always get a great start. No. He's a closer at 100 a meters, and nobody on earth is touching the guy. And, and a long strider. And, and Chris Johnson, now with the Tennessee Titans, said the same thing. There's another guy that was so fast coming out of East Carolina. There was a dart right there to the chest of Josh Jarbeau. You know, this is a team as they get into conference play. And we'll look at the Arkansas State schedule because they have another tough non-conference game on September 15th at Nebraska. But when they get into the meat of their Sun Belt Conference, even though they've lost talent defensively, offensively, this they're is still going to be a team that's going to be very dangerous in conference play. And they're going to get better. And this game, this game will have helped them. There's Jackson as they pick up a first down. So let's look ahead here and see what's coming up for the Red Wolves. Nebraska. On the road, September 15th, helps out with the athletic department's budget, and then they will get into the meat of that Sun Belt Conference schedule. Applin threw it behind his target that time, Kendrick Murray, but he was able to hold on and has a first down for Arkansas State. <laughs> More action coming up tomorrow. As you see, things will get started on ESPNU at 12 Eastern. Kentucky and Louisville. Carter Blackburn and Rod Gilmore will have the call of that game. See what Teddy Bridgewater, the sophomore quarterback for Louisville, looks like tomorrow. I was surprised to see Louisville in the preseason top 25. I think they're headed in the right direction. But to me, personally, because they were the preseason choice in the Big East, uh, I felt like some writers possibly felt an obligation to have a Big East team in there. I'm not quite sure. We'll see tomorrow that they're necessarily already a top 25 team. I think they're a competitive team in the conference. And yeah, and I, to contend. Tess, I think there's going to be a couple teams that get looked at a little bit differently. That Michigan team is going to be looked at a little <laughs> differently. That that wasn't a number eight team. Matt, what did you say to me? We're getting discussion in a moment. There's a great touchdown catch by Carlos McCants. What a strong effort by McCants and give credit to Applin. These guys are still playing here. It's been a blowout since the first quarter and they're still playing hard here in the fourth quarter. That was a great effort. But just to get back to your Michigan conversation. A couple days ago you and I are on College Football Live. Take one more peek here at McCants. Nicely done as he thrown on the run. Like we said he uses his legs to buy a lot of time and this time he bought himself a touchdown. And you said the team we're going to find out the most about one way or the other is Michigan. Found out a lot tonight. And that was one of the distinct possibilities that could happen because he knew that Alabama is strong. More reflections on this first Saturday of the college football season when we return. Look at this effort by McCants. <laughs> Chip Kelly right now is looking up at the Jumbotron watching a ridiculously funny video that includes Puddles the Duck, which is being featured on YouTube this week. That's how you know what the score is. <laughs> it's 57 to 27 as 
Chris Kelly. Is, he doesn't want to laugh right now, but crowd got a kick out of that one. As this is fielded at the 29. What about the Black Mamba tonight? Anthony Thomas, Matt Millen. Well, we talked about his versatility and how they get him in space. This is him in the slot, just getting downfield as a receiver. This is as a runner, across the ball. Now, here's what he does so well. He's got the vision, and then you give him a guy, he'll make a miss. And then the rest is just real class speed to the end zone. And those are just two of the ways that my buddy Barrett Brooks was able to pick out. And there are a lot more. This kid, you will see a lot of the Anthony Thomas getting in space and this offense scheming him to get in that particular space so he can take advantage of it. Eric Brooks, your uh, guru, who looks out for those sort of things down there. Big B, good uh, man. Who used to block for guys like the Anthony Thomas. All right, let's talk about the Anthony Thomas for a moment and the big picture because I know in the past week, if you follow the sport closely enough, you even heard it on game day today, he's kind of the cool it pick the trendy pick of guys saying who they like for the Heisman. Kind of the out there X Factor pick. Well, that's but bad. That's here, a kiss of death. Well, well Matt Barkley's the guy with all the pressure. It's Barkley's exactly. Heisman to lose, and obviously he got off to a good start today. Here's your second and eight here as Brian Bennett's been getting quite a good time here in the second half, and he gets this complete to Dwayne Stafford. <laughs> But the big story on DeAnthony Thomas when it comes to the Heisman is he can go about his campaign the unconventional way. He doesn't have to have the typical running back stats or receiver stats. He just needs the big plays, the highlights, the magical moments. And when he has the showdown on November 3rd against Matt Barkley, a lot of people think it's going to be all on the line there. Both teams could possibly be undefeated. Both these superstars could be crossing paths. It's going to be interesting to watch these two in the Pac-12. You know, the, interestingly, he, he may not have great numbers. That's right. You're going to look at his his Heisman numbers and you're going to say, yeah, they're not that great. And meanwhile, he, he'll be getting it in, in games. The like touchdowns this. will be, though. Touchdowns will be up. Right. But it's not, he doesn't touch the ball enough. So even you look at him, you know, in the, like a game tonight, he's got 64 yards rushing, and he could have had 264. Exactly. But listen, so. Kenyon Barner is the featured back. This is a guy who plays in the backfield, plays in the slot, returns punts, returns kicks. And that's what gives him the unique opportunity right. because he can have the big, impactful play that makes all the highlights. He's not going to be a workhorse like a Le'Veon Bell or a Marcus Lattimore. He's going to be the impact guy. Who, incidentally, those two guys were awesome this weekend. Weren't they? How good was it to see... Oh, Le'Veon Bell last night just turned on a, a sterling performance. He, when he had to be the man, he was the man. And how good was it to see Marcus Lattimore back coming off the ACL? Yeah. In just, fact, in fact, Millen, great point. If you ask me, what's my big takeaway of Week One so far? It's those two guys. Yeah, and and it's the manner in which they did it. When they had to be what they're supposed to be, they were. That's yep. impressive. Very impressive. As has been Oregon tonight. Stay with us. More to come. Tonight for the Ducks. Fast as Lightning is going to be the call to order Sunday on ESPN's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta. Coverage will begin at 6:30 Eastern. We've just got two races left until the chase. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They are locked in. Others battling for a wild card position. And this is Frankie Jackson for Arkansas State. Trailing by 30 with six and a half minutes to go. And this is going to sound odd. This is not a 30 point game. No, not even close. This could have been any score that Chip Kelly in Oregon wanted to make the scoreboard read. Now sprinting down the near sideline is Sir Gregory Thornton. A lot of people thought that Sir Gregory was going to be the number one running back coming out of fall camp. Gus Malzano, you see there, went with David Oku, the transfer from Tennessee, who was a big recruit in the SEC a few years back. Frankie Jackson now at the 10-yard line. He digs in with a knee. 
We've heard so much about the stories of Hurricane Tropical Storm Isaac affecting so many people and to learn how to help for this disaster and for others we invite you to visit redcross.org. Coming to the near side trying to catch a block was Frankie Jackson. And the flag is down. That's the same play three times in a row. And Gus Malzahn's on the sideline running with the same signal so he sees something in their run support to that right side when he gets in that formation and that's that's what good play callers do. Good play callers they try to get you in something once they know that you're in it they exploit it. Got two of the best play callers in recent years of college football on opposite sidelines here tonight. So there's another there's another good one up this way. Steve Sarkeesian. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players on the field. That's a five yard penalty. Still first down. Washington and Coach Sark topping San Diego State tonight. There they are. Two guys a couple years ago. They were battling for the national title. Malzahn on the left with Auburn. Oh, so funny that those two offenses that year, and you get a 22 19 field goal to the game at the end, and really the offenses that may have kind of chop it. Nick Farrell ended up being the star. Number one pick up in Detroit. Yeah. And this is Applin guarding ahead to about the three yard line. Reminder that once we're done, Sports Center is coming up. Kevin Connors and Cindy Brunson. Of course, they're going to be talking about everything that happened at Penn State, the full day of college football, and how the Tide took down Bernard Robinson. Cindy Brunson not happy with me at all because she was talking up Washington State as an alumnus. Uh, and unfortunately, she had to listen to the two of us broadcast the game in which Mike Leach was unable to have his offense score a touchdown. As Jackson gets inside the one-yard line, that's where they're marking him down. You learn a lot about your team in week one. What did what did Mike Leach learn about Washington? When he State? watched that tape the next day on when he watched it on Friday, he saw a lot of missed opportunities. And there were there were some throws to be made that